Okay, I thank you. We've, we've discussed this before. Um, I just love Kenny Dorham as a trumpet player. I'm not saying he's the greatest trumpet player that ever lived. Um, maybe Dizzy Gillespie and Freddie Hubbard, um, but um, it's just, you know, his appeal, his plan that um, has always fascinated me, his phraseology. Um, you don't have to be the greatest to be uh, the person that you like the best. So um, I've always liked Kenny Dorham, always will. Uh, of course, on piano, um, Cedar Walton. It's just something about um, his style, the way he plays. It's always fascinated me. And uh, after he's deceased, uh, I think I like uh, Mike Ladon. You know, Mike Ladon is more into organ playing. Uh, as closest to his style. And of course, um, you and I met uh, Eric Alexander on tenor sax. Um, he's certainly one of my favorites. Um, I would say those three that I listen to most. Crazy ideas, flawless technique. I mean, techniques are not everything, but um, in jazz, it's, it's very important to have technique. Um, it, he, he's always surprised me because, um, and I don't mean to say this um, with uh, prejudice, but um, I had the uh, mistaken idea that um, a person with those kind of ideas would probably come from the, um, the line of, you know, Sonny Stitt on tenor, uh, John Coltrane, uh, not from it. Uh, a person of a different race, but it, it, you know, race has nothing to do with it. I should have learned that lesson a long time ago. There are Caucasian uh, the mu musicians of all stripes that are just as good um, with jazz, even though uh, they um, they have a different interpretation to some extent. They're just just as great, and even greater in some extent. In fact, I had listened to. Um, Eric Alexander had no idea um, about his race uh, you know, until I saw a picture of him. And uh, I just think he was, and he still is, uh, evolving. Um, just great, 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 great tenor player. Great musician, I'll put it that way. If you're a great musician, then uh, whatever you want to play, whether it's a tenor saxophone or um, piano, whatever, that would show up. Not to mention Clifford Brown too, because um, um, everybody recognized him as a genius who died so young. Um, and to think about what he accomplished, even though he didn't live that long. So he was certainly an inspiration for all musicians and trumpet players in particular. I mean, um, you, I mean, you reach, you reach the point where these are all great musicians then it becomes a question of, of taste. Um, for example, if I had um, $10 in my pocket, would I buy an um, album by Hal Mayburn, who's a great, great, great pianist, no doubt about it? Mm -hmm. Or I buy an album by Cedar Walton? The answer for me would be easy if I buy an album by Cedar Walton. Uh, my taste, you know, I mean, um, it's like saying, uh, it might be like food. I mean, um, everybody likes, ice, everybody likes uh, vanilla ice cream. Everybody likes, I guess, uh, strawberry ice cream. But maybe if you went to a um, restaurant, they ask you, what, what, do you, what do you want to take, vanilla or strawberry? You make the choice, you can say both, uh, but you might say, um, I slightly like Strawberry, you know, I love vanilla as well. It's a matter of taste. I would say Johnny, um, excuse me, uh, Freddie Cole. I, I feel a little bit guilty saying that because I grew up listening to um, his brother, Nat King Cole. Of course, that was one of my mother's favorite. But uh, I just like his, um, his style of singing. 
I like Johnny Hartman, even though I haven't heard a whole lot of him. That album with uh, John Coltrane really um, gave me a good insight about what I liked about his voice, you know, the tenor or the tone of it. And there's another um, great, great singer uh, of yesteryears, uh, Arthur Prysock. He was um, not so much a jazz singer, but um, he was um, not versatile. He sang the blues, uh, ballads. Um, when I get a chance, I like to listen to Arthur Prysock as well. Oh, I love her. I, um, I didn't mention, I mentioned this male singers. Um, that's probably when I first got into, um, what do you call those? Um, iPods. Yeah, iPods. Um, my first task was to record Abby Lincoln. Because I knew about her singing with Max Roach. I knew she was married to Max Roach. And um, I knew that her style was, she didn't just want to be a regular singer. She wanted to um, be um, a kind of a composer, mm -hmm. not just sing other people's music, which is great as well, but to write her own music and also write it in a different um, kind of uh, genre that might include all kinds of uh, things and make it, and make it work. So I have a great, great respect for uh, Ab, um, Ab Lincoln. Um, of course, I like, um, you know, I heard Roberta um, sing Gambarini. Roberta uh, Gambarini, mm -hmm. um, there's a, well, everybody likes Ella, everybody likes uh, mm -hmm. Sarah Vaughn, those are people that I heard. And, and Billie Holiday, that's one of my mother's favorite. Mm -hmm. We love them so much. Growing up in the home, listen to them. There's another singer that um, uh, Gloria Lynn. She's mainly um, not so much a jazz singer, but um, the ballads that she sang. This the, the voice is just so beautiful. I mean, all of them have beautiful voices, but again, it's a, a, a sudden appeal that uh, a voice might have a person, one person and not another. But um, I did, I do, I did and I do like Gloria Lynn singing. She's really uh, probably um, maybe close to rock and roll singer back in the 1950s. And I'm not saying I like the rock and roll music, I don't. I, I had to play it for a living, but um, I'm talking about the, the ballads that she would sing. Mm -hmm. You know, a good singer, is a good singer, and um, you know they, of course they they sing for a certain audience, and I mean they may even love that they probably do, but when it, when you boil it down, uh, they have a good voice to begin with. It, you could get Gloria Yolanda to sing the, uh, the the national anthem. I mean, that's not her forte, but uh, she would do a beautiful, beautiful job with her, the quality of her voice, you know, just a beautiful voice. Oh, um, I had to get, I got, it took time to get used to him, but um, because the high pitched voice, you know, you almost think it was a woman singing. Uh, he had a way of just kind of drawing um, on me, um, getting used to uh, understanding that was that was Mr. Scott. You know, that was that was who he was. Would I accept that type of um, singing or not? And the answer was that I did eventually. And then I heard an album with him. Um, of course, it had several musicians on it, but uh, Eric Alexander was one of the musicians. Mm. And it just really um, kind of sealed the deal. Um, yeah, I, um, I think he has a, a, a good solid place as a, a jazz singer in history.
Wow. I mean, unique as he was, of course, but, um, you know, solid. It's not that uh, his voice was so different, which it was, but it had a quality to go with it to make him um, a, a notable uh, singer. It's a pretty easy one. Um, first one was John Coltrane. I met him in St. Louis. I told the story about him. Uh, <laughs> blowing this cigar smoke in my face, but uh, it was worth it, you know. And the, the thing about it, he was um, so down to earth, you know, he wasn't, um, he wasn't really John Coltrane, the great, great, great musician. I mean, he was that, but he didn't project that. He just project uh, being just a regular human being when I spoke with him, very kind, very gentle. So that, um, was such a great experience for me to meet him because it's everybody's idol, anybody that loves jazz. And then of course, um, Max Rose had a little bit of an influence when I was um, at MIT. Um, I did an interview at uh, University of Iowa to go there. I had just traveled across the country from uh, California to Massachusetts and I didn't quite really want to go all the way back across the country. And I uh, understood that Max Rose was here at UMass. So, um, I mean, I, I mean, I knew some of the mathematicians here as well. So that was a small factor to come to UMass and of course uh, to meet him and uh, to be able to play. I mentioned Clifford Brown earlier, the great honor of Pan, uh, the song that was written uh, in, uh, memory of Clifford Brown. I remember Clifford was the name of the song written by, by Benny Golson. So um, I'd say Max Rose, John Coltrane, um, Yusef Latif. Um, he and I were on this program at Tufts University. We were speakers. But I would see Yusef, um, I would go to a copycat. I'd be making out an exam. I could always have a secretary to print it up, but I would like to. Um, do it the night before and not be nervous about uh, the machine breaking it down. So I go to copycat and do it myself. I would run into Yusef Latif quite a bit. It was a lot of small talk, but um, we really, I got to know him when he and I and his wife drove down uh, to um, Tufts University. Of course, we met Eric Alexander. I have a, um, I had a chance to play with uh, Avery Sharp, I believe when I first came to, um, Amherst we played at um, Hampshire College. I want to mention one more, one other person. Uh, I mentioned him earlier, John Patton, who taught me, who gave me six months of piano lessons. And after six months, I started planning my first jobs in the nightclubs with um, uh, other musicians uh, that I mentioned earlier. John Patton played with Lou Donaldson. Uh, if you go to Wikipedia, you'll see him. He was called uh, Big John. Uh, he turned out to be a pretty well-known uh, organist, even though I, I knew him as a pianist. I left out Archie Shep. I never, um, I never worked with him. He and I went to New Africa House one, I think it was on a Saturday. And he wanted to try some stuff out on the flute. So he was playing the flute and I was playing the piano. Uh, that was about the only musical contact that I had with him. He had a daughter that was um, in the hospital. I won't go into the details of that, but um, as a uh, minister, I um, told him I would go visit uh, with his daughter, which I did. And I never had a whole lot of contact with him. Uh, other than the, um, the little session that we had at New Africa House.